so we feed our sheep um, weekly uh, and they get usually about a bale of some kind of hay, uh, either a loosen hay or an oaten hay, sometimes a grass hay depending on what the quality is like. Um, and then pretty much every week we'll supplement it with a bit of grain like this, which is just a a grain mix. Um, so there's wheat and sorghum and corn and oats and barley and probably some rye in there. And they just go crazy uh, for this. This is most particularly what they want. It's mixed. <coughs> there's a molasses mixed through it, so it's also uh, quite sweet. And so they would get sort of a scoop of this each. And the reason that we do this uh, is, firstly, they like it. Um, so it's a bit of a treat for them. Uh, but it also is a bit of diversity in what they're eating. Um, and nutritionally, it, it adds something to them. It gives them a bit of hot feed um, and gives them that, that sort of nutritional hit that they need. And then every so often, uh, like today, I will mix into it a, a, a mineral and nutrient um, uh, additive. So this has got things like uh, copper and magnesium, um, vitamins A, D, E it says here on the pack. It's got a whole bunch of stuff. Um, if I move this label. <clears throat> yeah, so you can see there, uh, copper, manganese, calcium, phosphorus, cobalt, etc. Sometimes I'll give them these sort of um, mineral supplements by way of a um, like a mineral block lick, uh, but uh, they tend to just trash that pretty quickly. Anyway, um, that's what I'm doing today, but I have noticed that, um, uh, and, and I should say as well that we've got, so we've got 4.2 acres here, we've got a fair bit of grass around at the moment, um, and we've got seven sheep on the place, so we're sort of getting up to that two head per acre, which is particularly for this time of year is fine. Uh, so they have plenty of feed and then I just watch their weight and watch their general condition as we move through the year and I can sort of tell uh, You know to what extent they need sort of supplemental feeding and at the moment they probably don't um, But we give it to them anyway as I said for that diversity and because of the fact that they like it and so we like it So there is also the issue of sort of general health and uh, that requires you to have regard to both vaccinations and then regular sort of drenching for worms etc um, both of which are pretty nasty chemicals um, both the, the, the injectable vaccination and the oral drench pretty serious stuff I would love to um, be able to move away from the the oral drench um, but I, I just not sure that that's in the best interest of the animals um, I know that people do use things like apple cider vinegar um, and rotational grazing and you know, all sorts of things to eliminate the need for drenches. Um, it's probably now coming up to, it'll be between six and nine months, I'd have to check my papers, but six and nine months of when I last drenched uh, these sheep with, a, with an oral drench. They're all looking fine, maybe with the exception of the three triplet lambs and the ewe lamb in particular. She's put on a lot of growth over the last, I'd say, month or so, and she is looking slightly wormy, uh, which makes me think that maybe I should get her in and drench her again. Before I do that, though, I just want to see whether I can somehow get her looking a bit better via the feed. So I'm going to make sure that she gets uh, plenty of grain with today with the, uh, with the nutrient added to it. I'm also going to put in some, we've got lots of garlic left over um, this year. Um, and I know garlic is, I certainly know it's a bit of a superfood for us in terms of it's an immune, uh, uh, immune uh, boosting food, uh, particularly sort of organic garlic like this. What I'm going to do today is actually cut up some of this garlic into fairly small chunks and mix it through the food. Uh, I don't know if they'll eat it. Um, but if it's cut finely enough and mixed into the grain, maybe they might. Um, I'm not aware that it's at all toxic to them. In fact, I'm sure that it's not. Um, 
uh, and just see whether or not this garlic uh, in any way seems to affect their their health and vitality uh, because I've got a fair bit of garlic left over so maybe the other thing that I do um, worm wise is keep a close eye on the manure and sheep manure should be fairly firm it should be reasonably pelletized and not runny and certainly there shouldn't be any noticeable worm infestation uh, in the manure um, I've just noticed this particular dropping here which is perhaps a little um, has a little more moisture than you might want I think now I'm not an expert on this I'm certainly not a vet but this is just based on what I've what I've read um, and if I just sort of look through this I know this is pretty gross so you can see that it, this is fairly fresh in fact I saw them do it earlier on um, it does pelletize so it, it, there definitely are pellets um, there's no indication no sign of worms here but as I say it's and it does actually suggest that they're eating a lot of very green fodder which is consistent with the conditions that we've got so you can see we've got a fair bit of green very green pick at the moment and that might explain uh, those droppings that we're seeing just at the minute not sure now each animal obviously has slightly different droppings at particular times here's an example of another animal's droppings another sheep dropping and you can see this is far more pelletized it's darker in color uh, I would say that that is probably more usual than, than that sort of clump um, that I was just looking at I do notice that ewes after they lamb and, and maybe even while they're sort of lactating they tend to have um, the clumpier and sort of runnier stools um, but if they had a real infestation of worms you would actually see an indication of the worms in the stool so that's what I keep an eye on and then just generally it's the health of the animal you can kind of tell when they are looking a bit wormy they will lose a bit of condition they won't have a bright coat um, and they just don't look to be terribly well in themselves good sheep good sheep good sheep good sheep good sheep so they are having their loosen so these are all the adults all looking fine oi, oi. this is the little one that I think maybe is looking this little ewe lamb here looking maybe a little bit skinnier than I would like but I might take them down give them this grain okay then come down come down they wouldn't eat that uh, that whole bale of hay in a day I should just add I'll get sick of it come on quick quick And what I'll try and do is separate them out so that I make sure that little ewe lamb gets plenty and we'll see whether or not they eat the garlic or not everyone coming? yes you can see she's at the back as well which is not necessarily indicative of anything but one animal that lags behind or sits at the back, particularly where that's not usual, can be an indication that she's not feeling great. Okay, some there. Some in here. Quick, quick. Quick, quick. Quick, quick. Ship, ship, ship. Yeah, she is still at the back. Come, come. Come, come. Come on, come, come, down you go, come on, down you go, fairly, come on, down you go, ch -ch -ch -ch. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Ch -ch fairly, come on, ch -ch. down you go, in you go, in you go, there's feet in there.
they're not that hungry today. Otherwise they'd be in super quick. So I'll just make sure she stays in there and gets plenty of feed. If I could get him in, I'd like to do that as well. I need this little ewe to be healthy because um, she is intended to be the replacement for her mother. She's, uh, she's got different bloodline. She's also a more pure breed of the, of the Harlequin Mini Meat Shoot, which is what I want. She's three quarters, whereas her mother is only half. You can see she's not terribly hungry. It could be because there's that uh, that mineral mixed into it. It might also be the garlic. I don't know, uh, but she's not she's not super hungry. Now the weather's cold. It's been raining. It's windy, so there is plenty of reason for them to look a little bit miserable today. But you can definitely see. The difference between her and him, he just looks far better in himself. He's got a good appetite. Hasn't really stopped eating. Eating the garlic? Yeah, excuse you. Eating the garlic? Barely. I can smell garlic breath, so that's a good sign. That garlic is beautiful. Uh, it's all over my hands now. So I would say that they're uh, they're nudging around the garlic. Maybe the chunks are too big. But in terms of why I'm interested in looking at sort of more natural uh, remedies to manage them. Um, you know, apple cider vinegar, which I haven't tried yet, but I, I might do that. Um, and, you know, the garlic. Oh, we nearly got some. He's having a sniff. No. Oh, aye, aye. Um, yeah, it's to move away from the, the chemicals. Um, now, I wouldn't want to do it if it's going to risk the health of the animals. Oh, I... But I do like the idea of if I can keep them healthy without the use of those chemicals, you know they're bad because when you look at the disposal instructions about how to dispose of the leftover uh, contents or even the, the, the packaging, um, requires you to basically treat it like a toxic chemical. So, I mean, I could just whack a drench into her today. But I think what I'll do is just give it a week or so and see if she, uh, she starts to look a bit better.